Welcome to the Pharmaceutical Technology Thought Leadership Series broadcast on drug development challenges. I'm Rita Peters, Editorial Director of Pharmaceutical Technology. In this conversation, we'll discuss Catalan's Optiform Solution Suite with Julianne Maisonnet, Vice President, Science and Technology at Catalan Pharma Solutions. Identifying a promising drug candidate is a milestone for a drug development company, but many unknowns are in the path to bringing a drug product to market. One major question to be asked in the early development stage is, what formulation has the best opportunity for patient success? Julianne discussed approaches to overcome difficult development challenges at a recent industry conference. First, let's set the stage for the discussion by identifying some of the pitfalls in early drug development. Most of you, um, we're going to review now this um, um, optimal selection in the context of the challenges that each of us know, face, and endures in the course of product development, um, encompassing, for example, uh, the high prevalence, the prevalence of poorly water-soluble drugs, uh, and um, mainly uh, we can so-called polywater soluble drugs. Then afterward, the fact that um, preclinical models often fail to provide human predictions. The elevated attrition rate also is an important factor. But most importantly, the fact, despite the fact that formulation scientists today are more and more skilled are developing complex formulation with advanced delivery technology, oftentimes they are de they devoiding their efforts to try to eat a wrongly defined or a partially defined target. So to avoid those pitfalls, uh, we will provide examples and we'll illustrate one success factor. The integration of drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics along with developability assessments to ensure that we get clear target that development scientists can uh, tackle in their development. In an interview, Julian Maisonnet described Catalan's methodology to facilitate early drug development. What is Catalan's Optiform Solution Suite? Optiform Solution Suite is a continuum of services uh, that seamlessly help and guide our customer on their journey from late stage drug discovery to clinical phase one. This continuum also aims at progressively de risking a molecule while building and evolving its body of knowledge and at the same time uh, leveraging a complete toolkit of advanced drug development and drug delivery technologies. So ultimately, uh, this continuum wish to deliver and facilitate the selection of an optimal formulation and dosage form uh, at those early stages of development. And the word optimal is important as it doesn't mean the most complex formulation or the most advanced formulation, but the one that's most appropriate to this development phase, and so phase appropriate uh, those form development model. How does the Optiform Solution Suite help companies make better decisions about their early development candidates. This is all about optimal selections, which happen in the context of a challenge that all of us know, face and endures, ranging from the elevated prevalence of polysoluble or so-called polysoluble entities, the fact that uh, preclinical models often fail to provide human predictions and elevated attrition rates. But nowadays, uh, despite the fact that formulation scientists and process engineers are extremely skilled at developing even complex formulations, way too often they are directing their effort at trying to eat a wrongly defined or partially defined target. So this is why to avoid those pitfalls, uh, we are going to speak about important success factors such as including drug metabolism and ph pharmacokinetic per se DMPK, along with developability, in the development range to set clear development target. Indeed, when you look at it nowadays, the work that our formulation scientists and scientists more broadly are doing is about assessing and selecting what is the right molecule, what is the right molecule form, what is the right formulation, what's the right dosage form. And 
By this, by designing the right studies, getting the right results and making the right decisions. So you will guess that that makes a lot of rights on the road to the clinic. And this continuum of making the right decisions follow logical steps that all together predicate successful selection. And this is Optiform. Julian Maisonnet outlined the five stages of the Optiform Solution Suite process. Optiform is indeed all recommended pathway taking molecule uh, from the early and late, the late discovery stage up to clinical phase one to five mandatory steps. So those five steps are the following. The first one is candidate selections, which is about getting the right molecule, as we said. So it leverage DMPK competencies in order to be able to screen molecule series, families of molecules based upon their DMPK properties, developability properties, and also their efficacy. And the aim is select the one that has the right in activity in secondary in vitro assay and give it the best chance of moving into the preclinical model for generating the first real preclinical uh, in vivo efficacy uh, proof so, so that we can there is the molecule. So we leverage the MPK services for doing that and we provide easy formulation kit and services three to four days working with hundreds of milligrams of the molecule so that we got the best shot when moving first in animal to prove that the molecule has some legs that it can show in vivo efficacy. Because we know there's this challenge, solubility challenges. And these easy formulation kits help to get the best shot at it. So the second um, step is about uh, preformulations. Once we selected a molecule, we're selecting what's the right molecule form. And for this, we have a finite amount of API, which is of molecule, which is fairly more important than on the previous stage. But with this finite amount, our aim is to generate the body of knowledge of the molecule by characterizing it and at the same time selecting the right salt form and the right polymorph. And for this, to make the best use of this finite amount of molecule, we utilize automated and semi-automated platform that we've been operating in Catalan. And with that done, we characterize the molecule. We know what's the risk profile of the molecule, what it is chemical stability risk, physical stability risk, manufacturability risk, put along with the biopharmaceutical challenge we have exemplified with the DMPK model we've been establishing. And then, with that said, we got the basis for moving to the first stage, which is about formulation selections, where we leverage a complete toolkit of either advanced technology, but also more conventional, so that a formulation scientist have the agility to adapt to the molecular properties and challenge, and be able to evolve the main and the right decisions using this said toolkit. And once we selected the formulation concepts, then we move to the fourth and the fifth stage, which is first about, in the fourth stage, selecting the right dosage form for GLP toxicological studies, which is not the same as selecting the same dosage form for the phase one enabling formulation. And for this, you need to be able to connect the formulations, enabling or not, which is either comicronization, spread drying, lipid systems, or hot melt extrusions, and at the end of the day, into a final dosage form, leveraging that on a phase appropriate model, which is first the GLP formulation and afterward the GMP phase one formulation. And this is Optiform and this is what this wall risk assessments and this wall continuum of services, this is the value we want to bring to our customer. DMPK modeling is a vital step in the early development process. Julien Maisonnet described how modeling tools can help identify a molecule's characteristics and aid in decisions to move forward in development. Now let's start with the first section, which is about getting the right molecule. At this discrete point in time, we have molecule series of a given family that have proven in vitro efficacy in secondary assay. And the main question is which one has some legs to make it to get in vivo efficacy? How could I propel the best molecule to my first in vivo efficacy model? So this is what we're going to illustrate example where we bring together the drug metabolism and pharmacokinetic assessments along with developability to make the right choice and get the right molecule to the next stage, which then could be formulated with few hundred milligram to get the best shot in the animal model. With putting us away of any arm and any risk of getting solubility hurdle, permeability hurdles, so we get the best three to four day formulation services to get you the best chance 
to deliver your molecule in animal to verify if it has any legs. So we're going to provide one example that's oriented around what's the key question, what's the best molecule. This is a family of five compounds that we rank order here by the efficacy. And we're going to see uh, compound one uh, ranks the lowest efficacy in secondary in vitro assay, whereas compound four ranks the highest one. So how do we select the, this drug? Based upon efficacy, it's a partial description. So what we've been doing, we've been doing a developability assessment using the developability classification system. We're going to see a bit later in the presentation. But the main conclusions that you need to get from this slide are the following. Among those five drugs, four will need formulation support. Does, does compound one, two, three, and four, with the exception of compound five, which is a soluble drug. What does it tell us? Second constatation is the following. Efficacy does not rank with developability. So you need to make some trade-off. It starts to be a bit more complex when you're bringing the, uh, the way the compound behaves in vivo. So we're modeling the same five compounds using Berkeley Madonna software and GastroPlus, and we've been assessing what's the percentage bioavailability of the drug. And again, create a second layer of complexity. But the conclusion of this study is when we bring in, and we've been measuring for those five compounds, the, uh, the clearance, so that we can get both the bioavailability and the fraction absorbed. And here are the conclusions from this slide. We get it here. Compound number one, we see as a has a fairly, um, uh, fairly moderate efficacy. The highest the score is, the lowest the efficacy is. And we see that it is a, a polypermeable compound and polysoluble compound. And even with a fraction absorbed, which is fair, uh, 31%, even if you resolve the solubility challenges, we see that 31% goes in 13%. So if you double that, you're not going to get more than 26% of overall bioavailability. So this is driven by high clearance. So this one is to be killed. The second compound is solubility limited, DCS class 2. Solubility is the main hurdle. But we see exposure, uh, absorption translating exposure. There's no clearance. So any slight improvement that you can make with this compound, which is fairly active in terms of solubility leveraging, will have a significant impact on exposure. So that's the reason why this compound has been selected as a backup compound. And we continue as those four. Uh, but the, the one I wanted to highlight is the compound 4, which is the one which had been selected. It's a DCS2A compound, very strong efficacy, rank one. DCS2 compound means that the main hurdle to absorption is dissolution rate. You need to go fast within the allowable absorbable window. So it's an easy formulation challenge per se. It's not resolving a true solubility issue. It's resolving the speed at which you get a drug in solutions. And obviously, it has a limited uh, fraction absorbed, but it has also limited bioavailability, so low clearance. So this compound is interesting because it means the formulation scientist can make easy work uh, by increasing the dissolution rate with co-micronization, micronization, or any other associated technologies, so that the fraction absorbed increase and equally important, the exposure increase uh, on the same manner. So this is the important factor. Compound 2 is the lead, compound 4 is the, is the backup. We move with um, three to four days uh, formulation services. Here it was in the US, our facility in San Diego. We got a drug that we propelled with compound two to the clinics, uh, to the animal studies, and we got exposure. And the next stage was synthesis scale up so that we can move to the next stage, which is the pre-formulation study. <laughs> <laughs>